Okay, I'm back here doing a follow-up to my Red Odo uh, 100 amp hour mini installation here on my RV. So did that about a month and a half ago. And right now I've upgraded the system to three 100 amp hour mini uh, Red Odo uh, batteries. They take up just about the same amount of space as my 155 amp hour uh, VMAX tank battery. It was an AGM. Uh, so it's taking up about the same. Now, these batteries, they definitely meet the capacity. I've tested all three of them individually, and then I've done a capacity test with them, all three of them, and they work out really well. Now, one of the drawbacks for RVers with these mini a Red Auto batteries, there's no low temperature cutoff uh, for it. So since I have a Victron smart solar controller, so that controller is capable of using a uh, external temperature sensor. And so I have that mounted to the batteries and I've tested that by putting it in ice and it stopped the charge at the designated charge uh, or temperature so it was set to five degrees celsius and when it hit four degrees celsius it stopped charging i warmed up that sensor and it started charging again at five degrees celsius so you can set that to what you want five degrees celsius right now we're still charging we should shortly be going to four degrees celsius and that should stop the charging process and there you go at four degrees celsius it stopped charging. Now if I, question I have is if I just let this warm up. So we'll just wait for it to go back up. I've removed it from the ice and placed it back on the battery where I plan to have it uh, connected. So I have it placed on the battery closest to the RV wall. That would be the coldest. And we'll just wait to see that uh, when it, at what temperature it actually starts charging again. Again, I'm just letting it come up naturally. I'm not going to force it to warm up. So using the Victron Smart battery sensor in conjunction with the Smart Solar and Smart Shunt, this allows you to buy a cheaper battery that does not have low temperature cutoff and enable that feature. So we've just hit 5 degrees. I do not believe that it will. Well, there we go. At 5 degrees, it just starts charging again. So that's pretty good. So when it hits four degrees, it'll stop charging. When it warms up to five degrees, it will start charging. So, you know, I think it's good down to zero. So I might lower it a bit, but the default setting of five degrees Celsius works fine for me. Anyway, that was just a quick test of the smart battery sense. Um, Definitely don't want to charge these batteries below zero degrees Celsius. So that's a safe number to have. Um, in the winter, I'm going to have this in storage. So I'm most likely going to have uh, the batteries disconnected and stored at a uh, 50 to 60% anyway. So I really don't need it. I just put it there just in case for whatever reason, it will not charge below zero. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at it. There's some interesting uh, install part that I've done with this. and. I think uh, you'd find it uh, very interesting. Now, a couple of things uh, that I like about these Red Odo batteries is even with the one 100 amp hour battery, I was able to run the microwave, the toaster, coffee maker, kettle. Um, it would uh, run the air conditioning as well, but being only 100 amp hours, it wouldn't run for very long. Now, it's not a, uh, a problem with the battery, it's just that it doesn't support that capacity because I I think the uh, 1300 or 13,500 BTU 
Coleman Mach uh, air conditioner uses about 130 amps, so it would drain it very quickly. Uh, with three, I know I can run it for an hour, uh, no problem. Um, today, I'm going to be installing a soft start uh, for the air conditioner just to make it easier for it to start, um, but it works really well. But definitely, these batteries are capable of just about anything you want. And if you have this setup, which is like 300 amp hours of uh, capacity, you can go boondocking for a long weekend and not have to worry about it. Like I leave this connected all the time. It's plugged into shore, but I don't use it. I use the uh, 2000 watt inverter. So my electrical bill has gone down since then, but it's not saving a lot. It's actually cost me more money to put this system in than it will ever come back. But I know that I can go on the road and stay in a Walmart parking lot or at uh, a racetrack and not have to worry about uh, running out of power so let's go ahead we'll take a look at this up on the roof I'll show you my solar right now I have 1200 watts of solar panels so six 200 watt solar panels connected to that Victron 100 slash 50 so that gives me the capability to charge the batteries at 50 amps uh, from at least like peak at like 11 in the morning till 3 in the afternoon so I can easily uh, recuperate all the power that I use in fact I have excess power so I can just run the air conditioning a few times throughout the day um, if I want to anyway let's go ahead take a look at this and I'll show you some of the, the setup I have okay so here are the three Red Odo batteries this is the uh, temperature cutoff sensor that's connected to the solar controller and I put in these very heavy duty copper bus bars and wrap these parts with uh, a heat, heat shrink. And so when you're connecting multiple batteries, the thing that you wanna make sure is that you don't connect the negative over here and the positive here. You want it to pass through all the batteries. So you'll go to the farthest one away and put the negative. And then over here, you'll put the positive. This way it balances the batteries as best as possible. And that's what I use. This, this takes up that same space, like I said, for the uh, VMAX tank 155 amp hour AGM battery. And then over here, uh, once again, I have the 2000 watt inverter with some cutoffs and uh, fuse panels. That's my Victron shunt, smart shunt, so I can actually uh, take a look at how much my draw is. And then over there, I've got the, and then over here, I have the Victron 150 uh, solar controller connected to the six 200 watt panels. They're all plugged in in parallel up uh, in a combiner box up on the roof. And then I have a switch here to turn them off. And I also have a switch over here to turn off the battery. So if I turn this off, this stops the power going out of the batteries, but my solar controllers can still charge the batteries. So I would need to turn that off as well. And I can turn the solar controller off from charging as well. So there's just multiple ways to turn it off. So as you see, all this stuff is stored underneath the seating inside, which you can't do with a flooded batteries. So this takes the batteries that you would normally have out on the tongue of your trailer. I've placed them in the center. They're actually right over top of the wheels. So it distributes the weight uh, better. And then they stay warm here longer. So they'll last. Um, so they'll be less prone to temperature changes. Anyway, let's check up on the roof and I'll show you how that set up as well. Okay, so we've got this one panel back here. It's paired with this one. Then I've got three along this side, two over here, and they all are paired in parallel. And they all go into this combiner box here. They put together and you can see the wires come in and then they're they go down through the RV vent, so the RV fridge vent, and everything is nice and tight. 
and all I have to do is lift up that. If I ever want to add more, I can just put another one set there. But I think uh, not much space left up here. So I've got a total of 1200 watts. Each panel is 200. These are 200 watt panels. This is a 250. This is my original panel. Um, don't see any reason to pull it out. Don't need to make them match all the same, but there's six panels all together here. And uh, there's what I've got up on the roof. Thinking of purchasing uh, lithium batteries, I would really consider these Red Odo batteries. Now they have these minis that I have here. Um, the one drawback to them is they do not have low temperature cutoff. So depending on where you're going to be using them, that might be a, a concern for me. I uh, have a Victron solar controller. So I actually installed the uh, smart temperature sensor. So that alleviates that issue. Um, but they do sell, uh, 12 volt and 24 volt. They also have low temperature cutoff batteries. They're a little bit more, but not that much. Um, they're, a, they're a really good brand. I think they originally were Zoom batteries. Uh, then they've converted over to Red Odo. So yeah, I would highly recommend these batteries. I'm gonna have many, many years of use out of these batteries. They're capable of several thousand cycles. And uh, the way I'm going to be using them, that's going to last for a long time. So anyway, uh, I do have a link in the description if you're interested. You can get them on Amazon or you can get them directly from Red Odo.